Hi, Nathan here. Today we're covering beginner slap bass. Make sure to download the tabs, Guitar Pro, and backing track for this lesson linked down below. The motion used for slapping is similar to the dance move that we all know and love, jazz hands. Do it with me, jazz hands. Notice how the motion begins at the elbow and the shoulder remains still. The hand pivots around its center point, and the wrist and thumb remain straight and relaxed. Now take your jazz hand and bring it down to the E string. How's it working for you? Some bass players slap with a downward pointing thumb, others with an upward pointing thumb. Most bass players keep their thumb parallel to the strings. And this is my personal preference because it gives more options for right hand muting. And it allows you to transition more easily into more advanced techniques, like double thumbing. As your thumb swings down, it hits the E string against the frets. It then follows through and rests against the A string and the neck. It's important that when you slap the E string, the other strings are kept quiet by resting your fretting hand fingers lightly on top of them. Notice the difference, first without muting. We can really hear those other strings coming through. Now with muting. Very clean and focused. Let's practice slapping the open E string together. One, two, three, four. Remember that we want all the motion to originate at the elbow. Your shoulder should be at rest, and your thumb should follow through and rest on the A string in the neck. Good. Now to introduce more of the fretting hand. In this section, we'll be using the close fretting method, which keeps any unwanted strings from ringing out while we fret. If you're unfamiliar with this technique, take a moment to pause the video and watch my demonstration of the close fretting method linked in the description. If at any point in this lesson you're having trouble with excess ringing and noise, that's the video to watch. All right, use your index finger to fret the third fret on the E string, and we'll slap this note four times. In between each slap, lift your index finger slightly so that the string is no longer touching the fret. As you lift your index finger, rest your other fingers on the string to help mute it faster. This makes the note staccato or short and more percussive like a kick drum. Now let's do the same thing on the first fret of the A string. When slapping the A string, the thumb will follow through and rest on the D string. While the fleshy part of your index finger is fretting the note, press the tip of your index finger against the E string to help keep it muted. As you bring your other fingers down to mute in between each slap, they'll still mute all of the strings. Next, play the first fret on the E string. And lastly, we'll play the third fret on the A string. Let's play all of this together. One, two, three, four.
last time. Good job. Now for the pop. While fretting the fifth fret on the D string with your pinky, use the fleshy part of your index finger to pull the string away from the neck, then release it. The string should snap back and strike the fret. Notice that as I let go of the string, the sudden release of tension causes my hand to move away from the bass. To help conserve motion, the thumb can be used as an anchor point and provide added leverage. This will help you play faster and cleaner with less effort. Remember how after slapping the E string, the thumb follows through and rests on the A string? We'll use this same position to anchor the thumb while we pop the D string. Try it out. See how the energy is transferred through the thumb and into the neck of the bass? Rather than having our hand fly away each time? The motion becomes much more controlled and efficient. Now let's practice slapping and popping together. Start with your index finger on the third fret of the E string. Slap the note, make it short, and use your thumb for leverage to pop the fifth fret of the D string, fretted with your pinky. We'll make every note staccato with left hand muting. Try that out a few times. From here, we'll move to the first fret of the A string and the third fret of the G string. Now the first fret of the E string and the third fret of the D string. And finally, the third fret of the A string and the fifth fret of the G string. Let's play all of this together. One, two, three, four. Last one. Slap rhythms are heavily influenced by drum rhythms. We'll often see pops in sync with the snare and slaps in sync with the kick drum. Here we have a drum groove. Take note of the kick and snare pattern. Let's modify our last exercise so that it follows this drum groove exactly, with a slap on every kick and a pop on every snare. It should sound like this. Let's play it together. One, two, three, four. One. 
If you've enjoyed this lesson, I have even more beginner slap riffs at the link below, along with tabs, Guitar Pro, and backing tracks for all of my videos. If you have any questions on these exercises, let me know in the comments, and make sure you like this video and subscribe for more. I'm Nathan Navarro. Thank you for watching.